Good morning, Guidance 3, and welcome to week three of our course. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the seven habits of successful college students, okay? And I really like this presentation. I really like this part of the class because I think, um, you know, not only will this help you uh, to become successful college students, but I think there's a lot of really good tips and really good strategies in here that can help you beyond college, right? Once you get into the workforce with that college degree, with all that experience, these are some little things to kind of keep in the forefront of your mind that can help you be successful in any aspect of your life, okay? So let's get right into it. Okay, success is not a result of spontaneous combustion. You must set yourself on fire, okay? Um, a very philosophical quote, but I think it's something that I would really encourage you to kind of sit on and think about what this means to you. Um, personally, to me, what I love about this quote, um, what it means to me is that, you know, we're never gonna be able to spontaneously combust, right? We have to actively do things to set ourselves on fire. And what I like about this quote is that it puts the responsibility on us to do the things that we need to do to make things happen, right? We can't just sit back idly and wait for things to happen to us. We have to go out there and get it, okay? So let's kind of use this quote to kind of frame the rest of this uh, presentation moving forward, okay? Awesome. Okay. Let's have a little discussion, even though we're doing this in an online format, some things that I want you to kind of consider. What are some of the things that prevent college students from being successful, right? What are some of the obstacles that you think you might encounter, or maybe you're already encountering, that might prevent you or hinder you or kind of slow down some of your progress as it relates to being a college student, okay? Um, and I guarantee that whatever it is that you're thinking or whatever you think that is serving as an obstacle for you or whatever is serving as an obstacle for you is also something that may be serving as an obstacle for another student, okay? So you're never really alone in this, all right? But what are some of the things that prevent college students from being successful? Okay, so some common obstacles that, you know, I've encountered not only as a student, but in my work as a counselor and working with students day in and day out, financial concerns right? That's one of the biggest obstacles for students, okay? Sometimes students will underrate, underestimate costs, right? Not only is tuition kind of expensive when you go to school, right? It's very cheap at Chafee College or any other community college, but a lot of the times once you get to a four-year university, you just got to pay the money, right? Tuition is tuition. Um, but there's not just tuition, there's books costs, right? Um, sometimes you'll find at Chafee College that some of your books are going to be more expensive than your actual class, Right. And so you might only, I mean, at JP College, it's only $46 per unit for a course. So you may be looking at, uh, my math is not great, but maybe 140 bucks, 150 bucks for a class. You might have a textbook that's 200 bucks. Right. Taking withdrawals in the class or fails. If you fail a class at JP College or anywhere, you've already paid for that class. Right. So if you fail, you don't get your refund back. Right. You've already paid for that class. Okay. Sometimes students will choose to get a head start on making money. So I know that when I was in high school uh, and when I was graduating, I went right to university and I had friends that said, you know what? I don't wanna go and be a broke student. I'm gonna go and get a job. I'm gonna get a head start on making money. And maybe once I make enough or I save enough money, I can maybe afford to go back to school, right? Um, some students get discouraged by student debt or loans, right? I have a lot of students that I work with who will start at Chafee College, maybe get a semester or two in, Maybe the financial aid isn't working as best as well as they thought it would. Um, and they'd have to take out student debt or student loans in order to be able to pay for their college. They don't want to necessarily do that. They don't want to pay loans back for the rest of their lives. And so instead of doing that and incurring that debt, they just decide, you know what, I'm going to pump the brakes on school. Maybe I'll just go and work for now. Maybe I'll revisit school a little bit later. Okay. Poor preparation. This is a super important one. Okay. A lot of the times, that first year as a freshman student, it can be difficult to manage your workload, right? You get a little bit of freedom. You're not in high school anymore and college professors aren't, you know, calling your house or calling your folks and saying, hey, you know, where's Betsy? Where's Timmy, right? Where's Jonathan? We need him in class. Um, and so you have a little bit of freedom. And with that freedom comes a little bit of wanting to kind of do your own thing. And so sometimes students, especially as freshmen, have a difficult time managing their workload, their social life, work, family, all the other things that they have going on in their lives. And oftentimes when that happens, something has to suffer. And a lot of times it's gonna be your education, okay? Fail to seek on and off campus resources for help. This is a really, really big one. One of the hardest things to do 
I would argue, in the universe is to ask for help, right? I think a lot of the times asking for help can be tough because in order to ask for help, we kind of have to admit to ourselves that we don't have all the answers, right? Some In some cultures, even, it can be looked at as a sign of weakness, right? But um, whatever the case may be, if you're not asking for help, nobody can help you. Right. And so a lot of students who fail to seek help on campus or off campus for whatever their needs are, if they don't get the help, they're going to fall by the wayside. And that happens a lot. OK. Additional common obstacles. Too much, too fast. OK. Uh, oftentimes, community college students will come into Chafee and be like, I want to get out of here as fast as possible. Right. There's absolutely a way for you to get out of Chafee College very, very fast. However, Sometimes that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get into the school that you want to get into, the school that you want to transfer to necessarily, right? I work with a lot of students that say, hey, you know what? Give me 18 units. I'm going to do 18 units every semester just so I can get out of here in a year and a half, two years. We can absolutely do that. But if all you did was get out of Chafee College fast and your grades aren't at a place that you can get into the school that you're trying to transfer to, then all you really did was get out of Chafee College fast. Right. And you didn't really advocate for yourself to move forward along your academic and career journey. OK, um, so you overload on units to get to a four year university faster. That's absolutely a thing that happens. Right. Sometimes it might be better to take it a little slower so that you can guarantee your, that you're going to get to where you want to go. OK, um, lack of educational guidance. Right. That's not going to happen for any of you in this class because you're taking guidance three. You're all geniuses. Uh, but a lot of students, you know, might spend that first year or two just kind of like taking things, right? You take stuff to take stuff. A lot of times you'll hear about your freshman year of college is meant for career exploration, right? That's not necessarily untrue, but if you do that career exploration and you learn how to do that exploration earlier, you can spend that first semester or first year of college really working towards your goal, right? Um, and so lack of educational guidance is absolutely an obstacle that students face. What major do I choose? What's my educational goal? Am I supposed to be transferring? How do I do any of this? When are my transfer dates? All of those are questions that we need answers to, right? And we have to ask those questions in order to get those answers, okay? Outside demands. We kind of mentioned this before when we talked about managing your workload, but life happens, right? Um, sometimes there are extenuating circumstances. Maybe you've had a significant setback in your family that requires you to maybe leave school for a bit so you can help out your family financially. Um, you know, God forbid, maybe there's a passing in the family that really kind of rocks the foundation of the family and you need to go and you know, tend to your family because family's first, right? Um, but these things can absolutely deter us from our goals, right? And, that, and they should, right? If you're having a family emergency or something like that, you know, absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, with, you know, leaving college and, and going to tend to your family, but I still think it, um, it definitely will um, prevent us from reaching our goal in what we thought was in a, a timely manner at the beginning, okay? A lack of a support system, right? Um, I think it's really important that we surround ourselves, each, each and every one of us, surround ourselves with a supportive support system, people that are going to help you reach your goal. Right. People that are going to guide you correctly. People that are going to push you and hold you accountable. Maybe when you're not doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. OK, if we don't have that support system, sometimes it's easy to kind of fall off track. OK. Community college benefits. So all of those obstacles. Here are some benefits about community college. So lower course costs. Right. I think this is really important when we're talking about underestimating costs as an obstacle in, in, in college. Right. If you end up at a four-year school, and again, not to talk you off the ledge of going right to a four-year school from high school, but if you end up at a four-year school and if you're dropping classes and failing classes, you're not doing so hot, the financial kind of ramifications of that are a lot more significant when your tuition's higher than if it was lower at a community college. And so I would argue that there's a lot of benefits in coming to community college. One of them is that it's lower course costs. Right. So the financial implications of you maybe not doing so hot, spending a couple of uh, semesters or spending a couple of courses exploring and trying to get a feel for the things that you like doesn't have as much um, kind of ramifications or implications financially for you. OK. College readiness and preparedness. Right. You get a chance to maybe take some different stuff. You're thinking about being a business major. Let me let's take a business class and see if this is something that we are going to even into. Right. Take a class like Guidance 3. We'll do an informational interview where you get to interview somebody in the field or career that you're interested in. You get a chance to do some of these things at the community college level. OK. 
major and career exploration opportunities. This is exactly what we're doing in this class. Okay. Um, the opportunity to earn the associate's degree, half of that bachelor's degree, which we mentioned last week. Um, the reason why I think this is such a huge benefit is there are sometimes going to be job opportunities or internship opportunities that are going to ask minimally for you to have an associate's degree. Very seldom will you find a, uh, a job or an opportunity that says we need you in the second year of your four year degree. But you'll absolutely find opportunities that say, do you have an associate's degree yet? Come on board. Right. And because of, uh, you know, because of you making the decision to potentially come to Chafee and finish that associate's degree, you're going to have that opportunity that other students may not have. OK. Skill certificates, certificates of achievement. Right. We talked about that in week two, the opportunity to get some certificates very specific to whatever your goal is. So you can go right into the field, get that work experience and start to build your resume further. OK. And support system building. Right. Really building that network getting references from your professors that can, you know, vouch for your ability to do the work, right? Being able to create that support system in smaller classroom environments so you really kind of understand who your allies are, right? Who are the people that are going to help you along your journey? And being able to do that early at a community college in a smaller setting, I think is really, really important and something that you'll absolutely benefit from, okay? Okay, so the seven habits of successful high school students. The very first one is be proactive. Um, I used to have really bad skin. Now my skin's beautiful, as you can see. But I used to have really bad skin, and I used to use proactive, so that's hilarious to me. Um, but habit one, be proactive, okay? What does that mean? What does it mean to be proactive? Really being proactive is acting in anticipation of future problems, needs, or changes, right? So always kind of being a step ahead. What if this happens? What if this happens? If this obstacle presents itself, what am I going to do to navigate it? right? Being prepared for whatever comes your way, okay? Super, super important. Taking responsibility for yourself, right? And also taking accountability for your own actions, right? All of those things revolve around being proactive, and it's super important to do, not just as a student, but, you know, as a friend, as a professional in a work environment. Always, always really important to try to be proactive, always kind of thinking ahead, okay? Actively seeking resources that you need instead of waiting for resources to seek you, right? And that goes back to asking for help. If you need the help, do not suffer in silence. Go get it. If you're not sure when you're supposed to be applying for transfer, I guarantee what's not going to happen is that you're just going to wake up one day and be like, October 1st, right? That's never going to happen. So if you're not sure what your dates are in order to transfer, it's incumbent upon you to go out and find that information because it's not always going to find you, okay? Reactive paradigm. So in terms of a reactive paradigm, what we're talking about is the outer locus of control and responsibility. Okay, the outer locus of control and responsibility. This is absolutely a testable moment. So let's make sure that we know this. Okay. When we're talking about the outer locus of control and responsibility, what we're talking about is not being responsible for yourself. Right. So things happen to you. And you're not to blame for anything. So things happen to you without you doing anything. That means it's the outer locus of control or responsibility. Things outside of you are just happening to you and there's nothing you can do, right? This is a reactive paradigm. This is what we would like to avoid if at all possible, okay? So some examples about the outer locus of control or responsibility. I failed the class because my professor didn't like me, right? That's happening to me. I failed because of that, not because of anything that I did. Right. Um, I was late to class because everybody else on the road. Right. Uh, there was traffic and that's why I was late, as opposed to being proactive and kind of accounting for that traffic. Right. Leaving a little earlier to give yourself that time because, you know, there's going to be traffic. Right. I was not enrolled in the correct classes for my major because nobody told me what I was supposed to do. Right. All of these are reactive paradigms, things that are happening to us where we say, no, nah, I'm not to blame for this. What was I supposed to do? Okay, these are paradigms that we would like to avoid if possible. Okay, proactive paradigms, on the other hand, are things that we would like to lean into as much as possible, right? So, instead of the outer locus of control, we're talking about the inner locus of control and responsibility here, right? I'm responsible for my own actions and take initiative in order to make things happen in my life. Okay, so some examples of that I was successful in my class because I attended. I participated and completed all of my assignments on time and according to the rubric provided by my professor, right? All of that was within my control. I handled that. I did that. 
I was being proactive about that okay I was on time for class because I gave myself enough time to account for traffic proactive completely within your control I was enrolled in the correct classes for my major and educational goal because I went to speak to a counselor at my college or my university right I went and I asked for help I was being proactive about those things okay habit number one be proactive super important okay habit two begin with it begin with the end in mind okay can you purposely fix a problem without knowing what the problem is right these are all rhetorical questions the answer is no right what I really like about this this uh, habit is or what I think really helps to frame this habit is thinking about how a GPS works right when you think about how a GPS works it needs two things it needs to know where you are and it needs to know where you're going right so essentially it begins with the end in mind tell me where you're trying to go I'm trying to go here all right where are you at right now I'm right here and not only will it give you one way to get there it'll give you multiple ways to get there right and I would argue that education is very very similar if we know what your goal is we know that we want to get you an associate's degree in business administration and we want you to transfer to UCLA we know what the end is we know where you're starting because you're with Chafee now we can plan you a, a bunch of different ways to get there right so habit two: begin with the end in mind okay effective students what they often do is that they discover what matters to them most before they commit to a particular major or career that's exactly what all of you are doing right now that is exactly the point of this class is to discover what matters to you most before we go ahead and marry a particular idea right so you guys are already doing this okay they set realistic meaningful goals right and they consider how their personality personality and their interests match those goals okay again all of this work we are going to be doing in this course okay they take career assessments and value sort activities and personality assessments all things that you're going to be doing in this class right they explore uh, different career and major options before they go ahead and choose a path right and again that's not to discourage any of you that have already chosen a path but again in this class we're going to do all of these things to really help build a case for that so if you thought you were sure about it now hopefully by the end of it you're like oh yeah this is exactly what I'm doing okay they map, out, they map out a plan for college and seek guidance if they change their mind okay nothing wrong with changing your mind if you are thinking about a particular major and we do all of this work in this course and by the end of the course you say you know what I don't think that this is for me I think I want to do this I want to do something else absolutely change your mind but the idea is that we change our mind informed right the idea is that we do all of this work and when you decide to change your mind there's a lot of reasons and research behind why you're changing your mind and what you're choosing to do now okay um this is a really cool illustration that I like when we're talking about beginning with the end in mind okay I think a lot of the times what happens um, and we have a video in this week's module that kind of goes a little further into this a little deeper but a lot of the times what we happen is that we choose a school first once we're at that school we'll figure out what our major is we'll go to school we'll get our degree and then once we're in the field or once we finish our degree we go ah, let me go and find a career that maybe fits with this major right a lot of the times when we go to that school it's just a proximity issue we just kind of go to the school that's closest to us right and again nothing wrong with that sometimes that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles you have to do that right but in beginning with the end in mind and what we hopefully will do in this class is start with the career so we start with the end goal we say okay what is the thing I think I want to do right and we decide that it's going to be uh, we want to open our own business we want to be an entrepreneur well then we're going to work backwards we say okay we know what the end goal is we want to be an entrepreneur now what major is going to best prepare me to be an entrepreneur right maybe we choose business administration now we're going to go and find the school that's going to help prepare us the best for that major which will then prepare us for the career right so in the first example when we're starting with the school we just go to the closest school we choose a major once we're there hopefully we choose a career afterwards that fits and we live a good life right but what I'm encouraging you to consider is begin with the end in mind start with the career and work backwards we know we want to do this this is the best major for that this is the best school for that okay really really important and a really like different way of thinking about how we go to school right because it's not normally how we think about it okay Habit three, we got to put first things first, right? We got to prioritize. Successful students prioritize, right? So they put their needs first and their wants second, okay? 
I don't want to sound like you guys is like parents or guardians, but it's very true, right? We got to take care of business first. It's super duper important. Take care of business first. The rest of the things will fall in place. Okay. We plan ahead, right? Assignments in college are often do often do well in advance um, or well in the future. So sometimes it's easy to forget, right? Every college class you're going to have, you're going to have a syllabus. And on that syllabus, it's going to tell you when things are due. So sometimes it's easy to look at the syllabus and say, oh, that's not due for another month and a half. I'm not really worried about it, right? It makes it easy to forget. But if we're proactive and we're putting first things first, it also can make it easy for us to plan, okay? Class half full, okay? So let's use agendas. Let's use our planners. You guys are on your phones probably all the time anyways. If you have phones, use your phone calendars to make sure that we're meeting all of our deadlines, all right? This week, my college-wide assessment is our assignment is due. This week, my um, strong interest inventory reflection is due. Let me plan for that ahead so I always have an alert so I can stay ahead of the game, okay? Designate time to get work done while the information is fresh, right? That's especially important in, a, in an online class. Right? It's easy to be like, oh, I'll just, I'll maybe look at the video on Sunday and I'll do the work the next Sunday. Right? But if the information is not fresh, are you going to be able to kind of speak to that information in the same way? Right? Something to think about. Create study groups with other students to get work done. Right? One of the best ways to learn something is to try to teach it back to somebody. Right? So being in a study group and being like, hey, what, what, what does habit one mean to you? and hearing the different perspectives, right? Getting it from different areas, creating study groups so that you can be accountable for your work, right? So that you're building your professional network, right? Super, super important. Okay. We want to be effective first and then efficient. Effective first, then efficient. Okay. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked. Being effective means doing things right, right? If you're effective, you're doing things correctly. Okay, you're effective at this. If you're efficient, not only are you doing things right, but you're doing them in a timely manner, right? You can get through your work efficiently, okay? So at the bottom there, there's a little bit of like, uh, a little bit of text to kind of help clarify this. Sometimes, you know, selecting a major without doing the proper research to ensure if it's a good fit for you, only to change your major in six months, or sorry, change your major six months before completing your degree. You might've been efficient, weren't necessarily effective, right? So we always want to try to be effective first, then efficient, okay? Let's get it done right first, and once we know how to do it, then we can kind of speed it up and get it done a little bit more timely, okay? Super, super important. Okay, habit four, think win-win, okay? A little shake and bake for you, a little Ricky Bobby. Think win-win, what does that mean? Okay, scarcity mentality. Scarcity mentality is the belief that the world is like a pie and there's only so much to go around in it. Okay. Scarcity mentality, the belief that the world, sorry, that says word, the world is like a pie and there's only so much of it to go around. Okay. What that means is that we're thinking I need to get mine regardless of what happens to others. Right. There's only so much of it. So let me get mine. Let me hoard as much as I can. I'm not here to help anybody else. Right. We want to think win-win. So we want to have an abundance mentality. Right. The belief that there's plenty to go around for everybody. That there's a way for everybody to get there, including me. Okay? We are not threatened by the success of others because we're secure in our own self-worth and in our ability to achieve our own success. Right? Sometimes I know that when I was in um, my master's program, people didn't want to create study groups because they didn't want to help somebody get a better grade. Right? As if me getting a 95 has to mean that they're getting a 93 right? That's absolutely not how things work, right? There's an opportunity for everybody to get 95s or higher, right? That's abundance mentality. So thinking win-win, okay? The five, parad five paradigms of interaction, okay? Um, so there's the win-lose paradigm where I'm going to beat you no matter what. I'm going to win and you're going to lose, right? That's definitely that scarcity mentality, right? There's lose-win. I always get stepped on. So I help everybody else to win, always at my cost, right? I think sometimes this happens in our relationships a little bit, where maybe you, maybe you get the short end of the stick more often than, than you should, right? There's the lose-lose paradigm. If I'm going to lose, you're going down with me, right? There's win. 
as long as I win, doesn't matter what happens to you. As long as I win, it doesn't matter if you win, doesn't matter if you lose, I could care less, okay? And then there's one that I hope that we all lean into is the win-win. Let's find a mutually beneficial solution. Let's find a way for all of us to do well, okay? Really, really a habit that I think is not only important for successful students, but for successful professionals, okay? As you get into the professional world, if you're not already, you're gonna find that win-win um, relationships with your coworkers is a better way to do your work. Because it's not always like that, okay? So let's try to lean into win-win as best as we can, okay? Okay, habit five. Seek first to understand, then to be understood, okay? Seek first to understand, then to be understood, okay? There's a couple different quotes on the left-hand side here, but the one I really like the most is Richard Branson, the first one. Listen more than you talk. Nobody ever learned anything by hearing themselves speak. <laughs> Uh, it's a little bit rude, uh, but I think the, the sentiment is something that you guys get, right? Seek first to understand, then to be understood, okay? Be a good listener. Your ears will never get you in trouble, okay? And that last one, Stephen Covey, who actually authored the book, The Seven um, Habits of Successful College Students. Most people do not listen with the intent to hear or understand. We listen with the intent to respond, right? Um, very, very poignant um, and, and things that I think are really, really helpful in terms of not only being a successful student, but just a successful and, and happy person, okay? Um, seek first to understand, okay? Roommates, uh, we don't have housing at JP College, but I'm sure that once some of you transfer, or maybe you're going right to a four-year, if you're living on campus, you're going to be living with roommates, right? Could be a lot of fun. It could be a lot of fun. On the other hand, it could be the absolute worst, especially if your roommates are the absolute worst, right? So poor communication can lead to disputes. Those disputes can kind of hinder your ability to be successful, right? If you're worried about fighting with your roommates and poor communication with your roommates, you're not worried about your academics, right? And so really, under, you know, really having the ability to seek first to understand, to listen more than you talk right? So that you can really get a lay of the land and really understand the situation is super important, okay? With your professors, all professors are not created equally, right? So it's important that you have an opportunity to get to know them maybe even before taking a class, right? A lot of the students that I work with who are like, mm, yeah, I don't know about this professor. I was on uh, Rate My Professor and they didn't have the greatest ratings. I always encourage students, go and visit them in office, office hours. Introduce yourself. Hi, uh, hey, my name is Brett McLaren, and I'm thinking about taking your geography class uh, in the spring. And I just kind of wanted to get an idea of, you know, if I can maybe look at your syllabus and get an idea of like what the class is going to be like, right? I often tell students, knowing your professor and having that relationship with your professor can sometimes be the difference between an A and a B, a B and a C, C and a D, so on and so forth, right? So getting to know your professors before taking a class, getting to know your professors while taking a class. Absolutely something that I think is crucial. Moving into the workforce, getting to know your boss, saying hello when you get there, saying goodbye when you leave. Those little things, very, very important. Okay. Habit six, synergy. Super important. Synergy is a Greek word for, that means working together. Okay. Um, and really what it's about, it's not, it's learning to value and work well with others. Okay, and that and is really important. It's not just about learning to value others. It's not just about learning to work well with others, right? To play nice. It's really about both, learning to value and to work well with others, okay? Uh, and really synergy is achieved when two or more people work together to create a solution that is better than either one of them could have created by themselves, right? I mean, this is think win-win right here. Let's put our minds together and think of something better than you would have thought on your own, than I would have thought on our own. Two heads is better than one. Let's synergize, right? Super duper important in terms of being a successful uh, student, but even more so a successful professional, right? Let's collaborate. Let's all put our heads together to think of something that's better than any of us could have done on our own, okay? Uh, and really what synergy I think is about is celebrating diversity. Right? A lot of the times when we think about diversity, we just kind of think of race or we think of ethnicity, right? But diversity is really, I mean, it's really, really broad, right? It can be your background. It can be your experience. 
somebody from a different country, then you might have a different perspective. And that perspective might be the perspective that you need in order to solve whatever problem that you guys are looking at, right? It's also about abilities, right? Somebody who might have a physical disability is going to look at the world differently, right? Because they might have had to navigate the world a little bit different. So getting their perspective is absolutely important in anything that you do, right? I remember I had a professor in my master's program. He told me that, and this really stuck with me. He told me, if you're in a group with three or four folks and two of you guys have the same skills, then one of you guys is useless in this group, right? If you're in a group with three or four folks and two of you have the exact same skill set, one of you is useless. And that really stuck with me because what I really think it's about is celebrating diversity and celebrating synergy. Let's get people from every all kinds of different skills, all kinds of different ideas, perspectives, and backgrounds, so we can sit and come up with the best idea possible, okay? So synergy, have it six, okay? Rooted in the belief that I can do better by working, by working with others than by working by myself, right? And again, this isn't to discourage you from doing any work by yourself, right? If you're somebody that needs to do the work by themselves, that likes to work by themselves, that's absolutely okay. I don't want you to see this and be like, oh no, what am I supposed to do? You don't necessarily have to do this, right? But I would encourage you to maybe push yourself to see, you know, if you were to do this and surround yourself with a team of folks that had different skill sets, different perspectives, I would encourage you to maybe push yourself to do that and see what happens, okay? It's rooted in the belief that the strength of the strengths of others can make up for my areas of weakness, right? So if we're in a group together and I'm not very good at PowerPoint, but I'm a great public speaker, and I'm working with somebody who's not a very good public speaker, but awesome at PowerPoint, we now have a pretty good group when we come together, right? We have all of our weaknesses covered. We have all of our holes covered, right? So we make a, we make a strong group now, okay? It's rooted in the belief that my ideas are not always the best. Right? That I don't always have the best ideas, that if we put all of our heads together, maybe the best idea wins. Right? And also that working with others saves time. It absolutely saves time. Right? You can chunk things up a little bit. You can break them up. Hey, you handle this, you handle this, you handle this, we'll come back together and we'll put this all together. Right? Super duper important. And it's rooted in the belief finally that it's not my way, and it's not necessarily your way, but it's a better way. Right? very philosophical, very lifetime Hallmark movie moment right there. You're very welcome. Uh, I felt that if you guys didn't. But it's not my way, it's not your way, it's just a better way, right? Let's just think of a better way to do this, okay? And then lastly, habit seven, super important, sharpen the saw, okay? Ugh, and then saws on the bicycle. I mean, get out of here with this. Okay, sharp, sharpen the saw, habit seven, okay? What does it mean to sharpen the saw? Take care of yourself, right? You're probably here about this all the time, especially during these times. Self-care, 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 right? Sharpening the saw just means maintaining your overall well-being, okay? Really, it's the habit of staying sharp physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Whatever it is that you need to do to make sure that you're right and you can kind of take on and handle everything that's on your plate, okay? If you're somebody that does yoga, making sure you make time for that. If you're somebody that plays video games and that's your release, make sure you make some time for that, okay? Don't tell your parents that I told you to make time to play more video games, but you know what I mean, right? If you're somebody who likes to go for a run, likes to cook, likes to listen to podcasts, whatever it is, making the time to make sure that mentally you're in a spot where you can take care of your work, manage your workload, manage your family life, your social life, all of those things, okay? The goal here is really to achieve um, your version of balance in order to remain your best self. So whatever balance means to you, right? Achieve your version of balance, right? Your version of balance is not necessarily going to be mine. The thing that the things that sharpen your saw may not necessarily sharpen mine, okay? About renewing and about recharging, okay? Habit seven, sharpen the saw, super important, all right? Awesome. This has been wonderful. I hope that you all got something out of this. Again, I think this is such a pertinent and poignant presentation uh, just to kind of frame not only everything that we do with students, but everything that we will do moving forward as professionals. Um, and so, yeah, I hope you got as much out of it uh, as I did the first time I saw it. Um, make sure that you go through the rest of this uh, week's module, week three, 
click on every single link that you see, complete all your assignments, and I believe that you guys have the College Y assignment coming up at the end of the week. So make sure you click on that so you can get all the information that you need in order to complete that on time. All right, have a great week. We'll see you later.